having a little bit of pro trouble streaming this evening. Um, it didn't seem to be working, but as I can see in the distance, we are now live. So thumbs up all around for being live. Um, welcome, 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 welcome. Monday night, uh, a little bit of, you know, just nice little cooking stream. It is Thanksgiving Monday here in Canada, so happy Thanksgiving to everybody on behalf of the entire nation of Canada. Um, we did our big meal yesterday. We deep fried. Oh, mm. Just thinking about it, I can smell it. I can smell it. It smells so good. We deep fried a turkey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. We deep fried a turkey yesterday, uh, and it was it was beyond awesome. It was spectacular. We did some deep fried Brussels sprouts, and we had an awesome time. Um, so today we are we're, we're 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 a little leftover done. We ate a lot last night, so we didn't want to do leftovers. So tonight we decided to do fried rice. Now I know I've done fried rice on stream before, but the last time we did it, we did a really big batch. Um, hold on one second. Sorry guys, just had to go and uh, chase the cat off my laptop there. She was pressing buttons. Um, didn't want her to accidentally run an ad on me, guys. So tonight, we're going to do another batch of fried rice. Like I said, last time we did a really big batch of fried rice. I cooked over two cups of rice, and it was a big monster batch. Tonight, we are doing a lot smaller, more density of ingredients to rice, fried rice. Is kind of what we're doing tonight. Plus, we have this little couple special ingredients we went and grabbed today at the Asian grocery store. So we're super excited to kind of get some nice flavors going. So earlier today, I cooked off our basmati rice. Now I use basmati because that's what we always have on hand here. Now I rinse and soak my rice. I rinse it until there is no starch visibly left in the water, and then I let it soak for about 45 minutes before I cook it using a two-to-one method. So for every one rice two water. So I used half a cup of rice, one cup of water. We cooked that off, cooled it down, and now we have this really nice, oh my goodness, excuse you, camera lady, chef wife. But now, oh, there it goes again. All right. Bless you. Now, we have this really nice rice that is very loose because we drained off all that starch. So we have that nice individual grain rice that's really going to be able to grab a lot of flavors. So, our rice is already cooked, already cooled, ready to go. Now, what we're gonna start with is we're gonna kinda start with a little bit of base. Now, the first thing we do, whenever we do any kind of fried rice, we cook our eggs off, right? Do you remember that from last time? I hope you do, because that's really important, is getting your eggs cooked off and set to the side to add back in later. Because if you've ever made fried rice before, and waited until the end to add your eggs in, you know that you don't get nice fluffy big pieces of egg into your into your um, rice mix. What you get is just coated rice. You don't actually get any of that egg individually in there, and it kind of is really unfortunate. So we're going to turn our element up really nice and high. We have our wok. Soy sauce. Now, we aren't going to add a lot of sauce to the rice. All we're going to be using is soy. And then if you want, you can add more sauce later because we don't, we're not looking for saucy. We're just looking for a little bit of sodium. So a little bit of soy, about a teaspoon. I'm going to say a teaspoon right now. That's going to go right into the egg. Uh, chopsticks, straight through the yolks. And we're just going to take your chopsticks and we're just going to give this a really quick little scramble. Just to mix that a little bit of soy in there, just to add that seasoning. Alright, now those are ready to go. So, I'm heating up my wok. We're going to get our canola oil ready. Because again, like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to cook off our egg and we're going to separate that to the side. Now, while the, the, this is warming up right now, which maybe if I turn on the correct element would help us, I'm 
tend to do that. I'm still going to get used to the stove and the place, but normally at the other place, we always use the back element at the other place because of where the microwave was placed. They didn't have a room to move my arm. So now I'm all messed up. I'm all over the place. So we're going to turn the correct element on, and we're going to let our wok warm up. Now, while the wok is warming up, we're going to take an onion. I'm just going to grab a bowl here. We're going to take our knife. And again, we're just going to knock the top and the bottom off. Split that onion in half. Now, this is just a little guy because this is exactly the amount of onion we need. We don't need a lot. But I do like to have a, a decent amount of onion present when I make fried rice. So we're just going to take our knife. Grab onto that skin. Get that off of there. So, peel this one. Sometimes that skin is tight. So you gotta get rid of that first layer entirely. That's okay. So, get that stuff out of the way. Now, our skillet is just about hot enough right now. So, all I'm gonna do is, as I've shown before, we are just gonna make little channels in our half piece of onion the width of the dice that we want and now again we're just going to use the knife cut straight down against those channels and it's going to give us our perfect dice because it has the layers we don't have to worry about going in between that's only if you want like crazy crazy fine bird balls and we're not doing that we're just going with a nice fine dice right here because we want the onion to stand out a little bit we but we don't want it to be absolutely crazy crazy big or small for that matter in there. So, again, just do the channels, straight up and down on the knife, with the, with the onion, and then just lay the last of the whip down, give it a nice quick chop. So, we'll put this into our bowl. Now I can feel behind me that our wok is getting nice and hot. Fantastic feel the heat radiating off of it, so we are just going to add some of that oil in there. Get that moving. Swirl it around. Now, again, the nice thing about adding vegetable oil into a hot pan is you are going to see the viscosity of the oil change when the heat touches it. You're actually going to physically be able to see when your oil heats up. And again, you're going to feel it starting to radiate off there quite nice and heavily which means that our eggs are going to cook very quickly, which is exactly what we want. So now that that oil is nice and hot, large wooden spatula, got my eggs, and away we go. So, again, don't be afraid of the fat. Get that in there. All that beautiful fat is going to help, because now our eggs are going to bubble up on the side. We don't have to do a lot to these. As you can see, it's going to move around. All right? You can get that moving all the way over the wok. So you're just going to take your spatula, scrape all that off the top, move them back and forth. Once they're not really shiny anymore, okay, those eggs are done. So we're going to move them back into that same bowl because the ambient heat from those eggs are going to cook the last little bit of egg that's inside that bowl. And so that's going to be safe for that to sit in there because that's going to cook. Now, the nice thing about having a wok, I'm just going to come around to the other side here. And we can just take a piece of paper towel. And that egg is just going to come right over there. So now we don't have to worry about any burnt pieces of egg. Plus, that egg is a beautiful size. So it's perfect for the next little bit that we're going to do. Now, my heat's going to go way down below medium. I'm going to put my pan to the side. We're going to let that cool off just for a moment while we get a little bit more prep done. So for tonight, I've chosen barbecue pork, which I've sourced from my favorite local gro my local uh, Chinese grocery store. We've also chosen some really cool shrimp patties. Now, this is something we found in the freezer section. They are pre-made. Uh, just little guys, right? Like they're just little shrimp patties, and they are awesome. Look at these guys, they're fantastic, right? Shrimp, spicy, awesome. We're gonna mash this up, it's gonna be super good. But it's already spiced, so we don't have to worry about messing around with them. But the mushrooms, 
Mushrooms that I got are really special. These guys are something special. These mushrooms are called pink oyster mushrooms. Now, to all my vegan vegetarians, uh, people who want to eat a little less meat, this is your new best friend, okay? This mushroom, I'm going to show you here. Squeak. Ooh, but look, look at this. Come on over here, baby. Look at that. So the density of this mushroom, like, it is solid all the way through. This seems like a freaking tree trunk, okay? These guys are so nice and dense that they are hearty. Like, look at the inside of these guys. They're absolutely massive. They're beautiful, but they're dense, and they eat really, really nicely. So what I like to do with these, obviously the beautiful caps, I just like to cut underneath them. We're going to save those for a little bit afterwards. But right now, we're just going to take the stem, split it in half, take that half. Again, we're just going to run channels approximately the size that you want your dice. This is all about your size control at this point. Then take your knife, and we are just simply going to dice that mushroom. Now, this, if you looked at this, if you just walked by the cutting board, you would look at that and almost think that was turnip or potato. Um, again, the density of this mushroom is unmatched. It is absolutely my favorite. You can grill it, you can roast it, you can do pretty much anything with it. But for this, what's really nice is that it will hold up against the really kind of higher heat we're going to use once we start really kind of flash cooking into our, uh, into our stir fry. Now, I'm actually going to save that third stem for something else later because we have enough here. So the caps, I'm just going to split in half. We're going to cut into thirds. We're going to keep these guys just a touch bigger. The bigger cap I'm going to cut into there just because I like to have the bigger pardon me I like to have a little bit bigger piece kind of hanging out now back to the wok so our egg is done we can move that to the side we're gonna get some heat back into our wok so we're gonna go back just above medium we're gonna let that oil just come up to temperature now those mushrooms are ready to go the sausage, the shrimp, spicy shrimp patties, that's a pre-made thing. We don't have to do anything with that. Now, once again, go to your local Chinese food market. They have all kinds of treasures. You're going to find stuff there you've never heard of. You're going to see things there and smell things there you never thought possible. It's going to entice you. It's going to invite you in. This, my friends, this, this is beautiful. This is beautiful product. This candy coated barbecue pork this is one of my best friends. Most Chinese markets will have a meat counter. They will make this. Buy it. Buy it from them. It is so good. All right. So, once again, medium heat. Boil those up. Onions. Right in. We're going to start those cooking. Take our same spatula. We're going to get those warm up. We're going to turn our heat up a little bit more. We're going to go just below uh, high. We're going to get those guys going. Now, while that's going, we have our mushrooms over here. Those are all ready to go. Now, I'm just going to take this pork, just these giant, big, nice big chunks, and we are just going to cut nice big cubes of that because we just we don't want little pieces of the pork the pork we want big pieces so this that's a snack piece for, for chef right there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the best part about being a chef you get snacks mm. delicious so once again just nice big chunks we don't want the barbecue pork to disappear inside of everything. This is the one piece we really want to stand out. So we're going to take a good amount of that. Just like so. On the other side of our board. And we'll 
put a couple more pieces on there. Why not? Why not? All right. Pork's good. Mushrooms are good. Back to the wok. Onions are starting to smell very much like sauteed onions. The heat is hitting them nicely. The fat is really starting to pull the sweetness out. And we're getting a nice sweat on those. Next, what I'm going to do is right now we're going to throw those mushrooms in there. So we're going to start cooking these bad boys down. Now, the nice thing about these mushrooms is that even if you don't end up cooking them all the way through, I'm sorry, I accidentally got a hot onion on, some, on somebody's foot over here. Um, even if you don't cook these mushrooms all the way through, the density and the texture are going to be amazing. So you can cook them half, you can cook them three quarters, or you can actually even you know, cook, overcook them um, because they are so dense. This takes so, so, so much cooking. You can just kind of keep going with them. That's why I love to roast them and grill them. Oh, man. Absolutely fantastic. So, those guys are working out right there. That's fantastic. We're going to just put these guys over here. We're going to move that pork out of the way. So, I'm going to stop getting going. Just clean up while we go. Prevents a bunch of cleanup at the end. Always the number one skill we try and teach every person who comes into the kitchen. Clean as you go, because then you're not stuck with doing all of your dishes at the end. Cleaning up all your garbage. All right. We now have these mushrooms, onions, starting to cook really nicely together. So we're going to drop in this barbecue pork. So we can start pulling out some of that fat. Because luckily that pork will still have a good amount of fat kept inside even after the rendering process with them cooking it. So we're just going to pull out a little bit more of that fat in the bottom of the heat there. So we're just going to let that just chill for a little bit. Now, while that's happening, so these shrimp patties that I have here are they're pressed, right? They're pretty solid. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to take them from my cutting board. But once again, we're just going to run our knife through them just to chop them up, just to kind of break them down a little bit. So we can use them. We can chop them in there and it's going to separate out. We don't have to worry about breaking it down with the uh, with our utensils inside the actual wok. So again, we're just going to roughly chop just to break up that patty. And then we're just gonna go the other direction. Again, just so we get kind of nice bite-sized pieces, just like if you were just icing shrimp. So we're just gonna do that. Again, because I did seafood, we're gonna go over here in nice hot water. I'm just gonna clean my knife off really quick. Because we don't mess with seafood, ever. Don't mess with seafood. Seafood and chicken, everybody. Those are the things a chef doesn't mess with. All right? I will mess with Texas. I will mess with somebody's mama if I have to. If I have to defend integrity, I'll mess with your mama. But you do not mess with seafood and poultry, all right? That's not the kid. So, we now have had the wok going in here. Now you're going to see some beautiful pieces like this. Now when I say this mushroom takes color, the caramelization on that mushroom is pretty deep. So, Again, we're pulling some sugar out of the pork. We're pulling some sugars out of the onions and the mushrooms. Now, that is all kind of cooking down really nicely. At this point in time, we can add in our spicy shrimp. Okay? Now, I am going to get rid of that cutting board that I shrimp on it. Grab a board for the next step after this. So at this point in time, again, we are just going to mix all that around, give it a toss, and let it just kind of sit on the heat. And we're just going to let the heat permeate through that. We're going to let it pull out all those flavors and get really delicious. While that's happening, it is time to set up our accompaniment. 
Now, for me, on top of fried rice, there are certain things that are, I don't want to say required, because that, 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 that's too strong of, of, of a, a word for this. Um, they're not necessarily essential, but for me, they are flavor and, and texture um, components that are unmatched. Uh, really, all I'm talking about, honestly, a little bit of very finely chopped up green onion, and a handful of Brussels sprouts, or of um, bean sprouts, right on top. Because really, all we're going to do is we're going to take that right there. And once this rice is all done, crispy, and we pull everything off, we're just going to put that on top. And the crispiness, the freshness, the crunchiness of it is all you need. That's all you need to top this. All right. Now we're going to go back to this guy. This wok is nice and hot. You can see our shrimp is coming together really nicely. It's nice and small, so it's going to be bite-sized all the way around. So now I'm going to open up a space right in the middle. Like so. And we are going to drop in that rice. Now I'm going to let that rice just kind of sit on the bottom of that wok just for a little bit. We're just going to start to pull up, again, a little bit of the fat, a little bit of the flavor, and a little bit of stuff off the bottom of the wok. We're just going to kind of get things rolling there. Now, this guy's sizzling really nicely. I'm just going to look for our plate. Ah, that's the plate we're going to put it on up there. All right. It's a good thing I'm tall. That's why the wife keeps me around. I can get things off the top shelf. Really, that's about it. All right. Now that this has sat on the bottom for a little bit, now we're going to start to toss. And again, just be gentle with it. Don't rush it. Don't try and get flamboyant with it. Just be gentle. And let it fold itself into itself. You can see that simply just by tossing that gently, I have completely incorporated every part of that fried rice into itself. The only thing we have left to do is we have our egg. We're going to take our egg out of our bowl, drop it right on top. And I'm not really going to mess with this. I'm going to let this thing kind of just hold out. Because again, you can hear, right? Just listen. That is the sound of magic happening in a pot, or in this case, a wok. That sizzle, that crackle, that's the moisture being released from our rice. That's our toasting. That's our caramelization. That's our flavor. It's all the good stuff that's happening in there. It's all, you can hear it. If you don't hear that crispiness, if you don't hear that crunchy, you have too much sauce, you're gonna hear it bubbling, right? You can tell if you have the right amount of moisture, everything just by training your ears a little bit. So, we're gonna break up that egg. We're gonna start tossing. And again, that just by the act of tossing, we've now spread our egg throughout the rice. So again, let it sizzle, let it pop, let it caramelize, let it soy. A little bit of sodium. One, two, three, four, five. Five seconds of pour. You really, it's about four tablespoons, okay? It seems like a lot. That is 60 milliliters of soy. But that's the only seasoning we've added extra into this entire dish outside of the 10 milliliters of soy we added to our egg at the very beginning of the dish. So if you take that into consideration, we really haven't added a lot to this yet. What this is going to allow us to do is give us a base where you can now add as many layers. Now I pulled a couple things out that you can add, again, a little bit more soy. If you like a little more sodium hit, you got your soy sauce. Spice. 
obviously, rooster sauce. Sriracha is your best friend. Sambal is also another way you can go with this, but this is your best friend for fried rice. It always has been, it always will be. Uh, something you may not be familiar with, furikake. Now, this is a more of a Japanese um, spice blend. This one in particular is vegetarian. It contains um, a lot of natural glutamates. Uh, now, I know that's a scary word, glutamate. Um, it's seaweed, it's toasted sesame, beautiful flavors. It tastes like the ocean. So, now that we've added that soy, I let it sit for a minute. One toss, just to put the bottom to the top. Now that top, we're going to let toast and let crunch. Because as you can see here, you want to bring the camera over here. You're going to get pieces like this of this beautiful egg that is globbed on to a little bit of that shrimp and it's just caramelized all the way through. And that's just going to get crusty and delicious and it's going to hold so much flavor in there. It's going to be so good. So this guy, as of right now, we're going to turn our heat off. Ooh, it smells just delicious. It smells like toasty, soy, caramelized flavors. It smells so good. All right. Now. Just gonna bust this guy up. Give it a couple more tosses. Make sure some of that really super caramelly stuff has made its way inside the dish. All right. Now we come over to the plate. Onto the plate. start with the green onions. Let's get all those on there. Because that freshness, that flavor, the aroma, mm, spectacular. And then we finish with the sprouts. Bean sprouts for the win. Oh my goodness, one of my favorite things. So crunchy, so full of water. They're just, they just, they have such a beautiful texture to them and they make any dish like this that tends to kind of muddle textures inside it as, as a conglomerate to add these crunchy, fresh textures and flavors on top of everything is what really sets it apart. Textures are one of your best friends when it comes to any kind of like toss together Asian style food, stir fries, noodles, fried rice. That's why we, sometimes we add crunchy peanuts on top, but that's where the bean sprouts and that's where that green onion really makes a difference for you. Guys, thank you so much. Monday has happened. Tomorrow we're back to work. Might do something on Wednesday. Haven't quite confirmed yet. We're going to see. We're going to see how we feel. But we might. We just might. All right. Uh, find me on Twitter, Uncensored Chef, with an extra F at the end. You can find me on Facebook. Search me on Uncensored Chef. All these streams are going up on YouTube, Uncensored Chef. Um, find me on gaming platforms, Uncensored Chef, surprise, surprise, or the Uncensored Chef if the original one doesn't work. Um, find me, interact with me, hang out with me, come back here, come back into my kitchen. Guys, th once again, thank you for joining me. I am the Uncensored Chef. That is a giant plate of fried rice. I will see you guys next time. Keep cooking.